Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Bobby Sapphire. It is early Sunday morning, and it's time for episode 22 of the KTOD Radio Podcast. I'm here with the entire KTOD, and it looks like they're coffees. What's up, Justin? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm at the stage of the podcast 22 where the alarm goes off, and it's like my 20th year teaching school. I It goes off. I say a very bad word, which I don't want to say in the first minute of the podcast. And then I wake up and I get my coffee and I head downstairs. Yep. Nice. Uh, And I get to hang out with Maddie all day yesterday. We had a 1K together. What's up, Maddie? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And so because I was gone all day at the 1K, I woke up before my alarm. I ran downstairs. I made breakfast for my son, coffee for my wife, walked the dogs and got (laughs) was like, oh, by the way, I also have a podcast in the morning. Um, so I greeted her with some snacks and and, and stuff like that. To, to You're a rena- of, renaissance yeah. man. Nice. You know, I just Such a good to husband. Do... <laughs> I have my moments. Uh, <laughs> and Steve, fresh off his housewarming party yesterday, how'd that go, bud? Oh my, it was good. Yeah, you know, we had a good time. Got uh got after a little bit. Um, definitely a little tired this morning. Actually, set an alarm for the first time, and God wow. knows how long. Wow. I, I didn't. I did not sleep until the alarm, but I did set it. Nice. But uh, no, I things that good. life. Yeah, yeah I got to visit. Dead. I got to visit Steve's actual office. I saw the 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 little Denny's got there in person. My boys yeah, were having sweet. a good time. Oh, cool! Yeah, you saw, dude, I saw the the picture with you with the big was it big champagne? That thing was huge. Oh, the rosé. Yeah. Yeah, the rosé. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still? Was, did you crack? Did you open it? No, I did. Uh-huh. I have three of them now. I won we should we work, should do man. something like, with it. I'm down. Like I I don't have enough friends to ever like actually <laughs> consume an entire thing. Of it. Can Even we ask the draft hang if we can bring it? <laughs> yeah, maybe we should do it at a BYOB place. That way we yeah can, we can pop That'd be it. Sick. Taking that to Just a BYOB it. place would be amazing because they yeah. would say like, yeah, sure, it's fine. Bring a few bottles. Bring like one or two bottles, and we're like, okay, cool. And we will bring one bottle. Giant, giant bottle. You, you you set it up. I'll bring the goods. All right, yeah, we should sure. set that up for one of the draft hangs. So, um, where. Our draft hang is coming up soon. If you're local to us or live in the New England area or want to just fly in, um, you know, hit us up. It's the December 7th weekend. And uh, we should be taking draft hangs to some other cities on Earth. Don't spoil it. <laughs> That's all Don't I'll spoil. say. We'll yeah, be, spoiler alert. We'll be on Earth doing draft hangs, uh, giving out mats and free drafts and hopefully a giant bottle of rosé. And visiting the communities too, which is the best part. Like seeing people in other areas getting yeah. to like connect like the screen names from Discord to actual yep. like people and faces and experiences. That's what things I'm really looking forward to. Well, that's like what thing was the road. great about Gen Con and like normally tournaments, yeah. but like there are no tournaments. It just so. hasn't been enough. Yeah. <laughs> if there were tournaments all the time, we could just do these at the tournaments. And I'll be at SCG Atlanta. Hopefully drag a couple of these guys with me so we can do one there too. Um, awesome. but it's yeah, more about was, yeah. the scheduling and stuff. So, right. I was just going to say like, yes, like we get to see the local guys more, you know, that's easy. And like, that's such a good hang. And like, just kind of like meeting other people's locals, putting the, the face, the exactly. name, like, that's what's other people's like, locals. Yeah. It's just like, it's so fun. Oh. Like, I know we're all competing and like, that's the main goal. But like after like the topic, like 10 people at the Chinese food place, like yeah. drinking Mai Tais and sharing egg rolls, like that was also probably the best part of the day. Yeah, I forgot we got prizes. I'm gonna be honest. Mike had to remind me <laughs> that that was. Well, I was like, Matt, can you get my cash? And he's like, Oh, cash, right? Yes, I remember. And you lost your you lost your Quinlan. Oh, and shoot. you lived a you lived a Maddie life. Although you guys crushed it. I mean, no spoiler alert, but you guys you guys rocked it. Out. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about uh, new Metal Fab tokens from our sponsor, MetalFabTokens.com. We're gonna talk about our 1K huge UK event going on now. <laughs> if you see me looking way to the side. Uh, it's because the stream of the top eight is on, and I'm yeah, watching while correct. we record. I'm split green right now. Talking about meta breakdown, and then we're going to do some Patreon listener questions. Oh, uh, yeah. Maddie lost his Quinlan Voss yeah. showcase. He has no idea where it it's is. It's not cool. in here. If you haven't been so following not us, gonna expect it might be in my car. Well, <laughs> I pulled that, so. so yeah. Uh, this is the content we've been Fair making enough. lately. We're up to uh, almost. 6,500 subscribers. Um, we got, even though it has the lowest views on this screen, Justin and I got a ton of great feedback. Some people, like Cuenca said, it is the best like card content he's ever watched. 
was our matchup deep dive. That's wild. Um, you I guys should if, keep doing that. I don't. Which, I, we're gonna keep doing it. I don't know if it's the best card content in the history of card. I content. think people liked that. It w- he said it was like it wasn't low effort. It took a lot of effort. You yeah. guys took notes. You talked about the match, and you know you talked about a game you played. It wasn't just like. Um, I don't want to name names, but some people do like re-record commentary over games and you can tell they've never watched the game before. You know, they're just kind of like going off the hip, which is fine, but it's just like a low effort thing. And like lots of people make that. I've definitely made that kind of stuff. Um, We try to put a little more effort into it and we've gotten amazing feedback on that. So no, and I just before this, we were talking about scheduling like at different places. I think one of the cool things is we did a local game shop that just opened battlegrounds who's been you know a new england staple for a while but they have a new store in framingham so we were able to get out there you guys were at tj's yesterday for the 1k oh and what a great the content that was. there um so like doing the recording at like the grassroots level is really fun but i agree mike i think the the process of it was really great like doing the games and then like having time to process it you and i connected in the gap and we were like what this turn like three like this was really weird i think i'm going to talk about how i resourced two i re, i open-handed two bright hopes and i resourced one against django and really i should have just recognized you know playing back-to-back bright hopes would have been insane just yeah. like having that that commentary back and forth um was really good i'm excited to do the next one i think um the next one the, like we hit like one of the top matchups sabine versus django right i think that was great too and i think for the next one we should try to keep doing that like hit another um like what's on stream right now for the for the for the euro event like hit a, hit a top versus match. yellow palp yeah i mean we'll yeah. talk about it but i've been working on yellow palp and that's like gonna be You've one been of my big decks time, to right? um to like yeah the the thread in the ktod discord is popping off i had people play it at there like win a case event this weekend people are giving tons of feedback um, I'm on the full now. There are two of them playing. Uh, yeah, that's that's really obviously cool. different than what Josh is doing here, but um, still, you know, got a lot going on with the yellow palp. Um, but yeah, and then yeah, lot. There's lots to explore, and there's lots of matchups to explore, and we continue to play test right, and then we can loop back to like when we record the video and be like, okay, so I tried this line out. Like you were going super wide, but then when we actually recorded the the audio. You were like, oh, I don't necessarily always want to go super wide because right. you tested that more. So like, it's it's a pretty cool format, and I'm happy. And to shout do it. out to to Maddie for standing on business because you've got the the video in the bottom right hand corner. Quinlan Voss is busted, stood on business. Played yesterday. Yep, I, I did. I I put my money where my mouth was. Um, yeah. So one thing I wanted to say quick, and this is like a little bit like turning into mini podcasts, also like KTOD meeting. I think that video should be like a format we bring back. We got such positive feedback. I think the views thing, I'm not really worried about. Like Mike said from the beginning and you guys echoed it is like quality content is what we want to do. So like, yeah, putting in that extra little bit, I think will be like rewarding for everyone. And like, that's the thing is like we put out really solid, you know, content just to YouTube, like for people to watch. So um, I think that's still very important. So I think I think you guys knocked it out of the park and like created the new way to do it. You know, always looking to improve, and you guys like moved the bar up on that one. So that's sweet. Mike's watching the, the yeah, game. Yeah, sorry, I'm like <laughs> and Josh. We'll Twenty nine. We can't do the uh, feedback on like the shuffling noises. There were no shuffling noises in those. That's uh, true. We, we, so we don't have to the build audio. the hate of like, oh, why are these guys flicking their cards? I can't handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's we we, good. we beat that the system that, on that. That was me. <laughs> hey man, we, we all got it. Don't worry about it. Uh, and, got... and because we were on the road, we had to wear shirts. We had to keep our clothes on. So that's another. There you go. We got we got to we got to record one of the video connection. And throw Survivor on in the background. Oh my god! Uh, nice. And then, if you haven't subscribed to Maddie's uh, YouTube channel, you should go check it out. Maddie finally crested the 1,000 uh, mark. Oh, and, yeah, uh, once right, I hit so 1K, 1, yeah, once I hit 1K, it was just like an avalanche. Um, right. And you know, the, this is the meta video doing well. Um, my tier list and the, bo- the bottom there did did well. Just like having fun with it, you know, just like a, a way to like. Get a little more Maddie in your life. Um, yep. Said it last night at the at the dinner, but like a tier list is just a conversation, guys. You know, it's not meant to like tell you how to think. It's just us talking, right. and that's a context for it. And then also, my only correct tier list was it a meme for Asmund Gold. Go check out his. He does funny tier lists. That was the idea. It wasn't to tell you what to think. But anyway, it's a good channel. I think yeah. the thumbnails yeah. pop thanks to Symbiote. Yeah, shout uh, out Sim. We have good time. And Maddie, Maddie, how often do you use that face in the courtroom? 
Like if uh, someone like that should be your objection face. Yeah. Like, I, I, objection. I object. I'll I'll start doing it. Like oh man, there's a video game that like someone from Critical Role voiced the actor, and it's like wild. It's like that. It's like a court cartoon, and he's like, ah! <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Um, and Maddie drops videos every Tuesday. That I do. I got to get up on them because the baby's coming in less than two weeks. So yeah, you got to bank them up. That's Banking what my movie, baby. the movie podcast I listened to did. They like banked him for like six months because guy had twins. Uh, all right. Shout out to Metal Fab Tokens, our sponsor. Their new streaming set of tokens. And like, I can't stress enough. I just use these for, for like, just for using them yesterday. They are incredible. They're huge. Mm-hmm. Like, this is them like on a card. I don't have a unit right next to me, but they're massive. They're heavy. They're Dude, beautiful. those streaming ones are so sick. Um, yeah, they're insane. And like the, the Metal Fab guy, b he sent the message to us. He's like, hey, it's okay if I just send the whole the whole package to Mike. So I'm I'm looking forward to getting my share. I'm sure that'll happen. Um, Good luck. As, Good as I see pictures yeah. of Mike with like all like playing Tarkin next week. Like, <laughs> God, sorry. Uh, I'm going to need these. I have sorry, so guys, many bags, share. but yeah, we got to... We, we honestly we need more because if we ever have an event, we're gonna want so many of these. Well, it's funny because before he messaged me, he's like, "Oh, your boys will love these. Like, get these for your boys." And I was like, "Yeah, just send them to Mike. That's cool." And it's like, mm, yeah, well, good luck. I'll get them to you. You got to come to the one. <laughs> hey, you got to come to stuff. <laughs> um, but the tokens were awesome. Um, I was using them as damage on yeah. base, but I might swap to damage on units. Some people would come over oh. and they were like, "You have eleven life." <laughs> it's like, uh. Or like, is that eleven oh. damage? And and you could also just do it like that, but it's not as is. Um, that is you know, cool clean. though. I wonder how that would work. You'd yeah, to... I so I might I might swap there's to no still twos, using though. dice. Yeah, there's no twos, so oh, you can't. Yeah, you couldn't really. You can't do you do just it have them make? Yeah, make two of the, like every number. One, yeah, nine, that's why one, we were talking to him about potentially doing dice, and I know he's workshopping dice. He sent me some prototype prototype metal dice, so we'll see what he's got in store. But he he. He recognized that they were tough to see and made these awesome giant ones. Yeah, the um, giant ones are that sick. are really cool. And I used some. He he also like I used some assets in my Anakin video last week, and they're just big really and they're cool. cool. And of course, I like the idea of cool. like a like a zero through nine concept though. That is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah I, we I'm haven't sure. seen you haven't seen that in in like the way that people do their stuff because you have the dials with that. Right. Yeah, in yeah, terms yeah. of like yeah. an actual like just sort of a numeric system, that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of ex- that's a really good it's point. It's not like, super fast. It, to do that yeah you know? it's not as fast but like it's i feel like it, it would be a little more clear like because i was playing clean, against somebody yeah. and he had the tokens the game genic ones and it was like a 10 a 5 a 3 and a 1 and like right 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 exactly it, it, i know it's very simple but when you're trying to like do a million things doing like basic arithmetic like taxes your brain a little bit you know um mm-hmm. so it's just kind of like it, it, that's why i do the five the five um d6 system for now when right. not using my sweet metal fab tokens, but I'm excited for those metal fab dice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so me and Maddie had a 1K. Uh, we top aided together. Uh, I was on Django Tarkin Town, which I mentioned in my Anakin video this week. I was probably just going to end up playing that, and the deck is re- it's really good. So I continued to play it. Uh, Maddie played Quinlan Tarkin Town, which is something he'd been working on with Wu. Uh, I know he shouts out Wu in his list. Yeah, uh, shout, yeah, I put him. I put his name right in there. Um, I had I'd been working on it. Wu had been working on it, and then um, a meeting of the minds. My list just kept kind of sliding over to his, um, taking out some of my experimental cards, um, and and yeah, it, I think we were like one one card off. So cool. Uh, and then you know, as it is a Massachusetts local, seven of the top eight were from the KTOD Discord, <laughs> yeah. which was awesome. Eric Seven out of the top eight, and then Eric, the other one, is someone we've known for thirty years. <laughs> thirty Eric years Hunter. since he was like literally shorter than us. Now, he's, since he was like four seven, now he's seven three. I don't right? think he was ever shorter than me. He's he, he came was, in like, seven. He was, seven like, feet tall, chubby and stuff. Like way like when he was a super little kid, he was Ooh. chubby. We have a picture of him chubby. Yeah, I, I oh, was yeah, talking to him about that. that. Like I have this one. Our buddy. There he is, There's right there, playing me little, actually, little boy, yep. and then me playing Hayes. That's a good yeah. one. Wow. That's epic. Wild. Uh, yeah, so a uh, great event. Um, Yarn Solo with the new KTOD lady shirt. If you're a lady in the KTOD Discord, hit us up. Send you a shirt. 
There's uh, some premium fashion in that picture right there. Yeah, that's all our premium stuff. Maddie, me, and oh, yeah, Darren yeah, are all in the... premium gear. Uh, and then uh, me, Eric, Maddie, and Teddy came in uh, top four, and we decided to split so we could go have Chinese food next door, which you can see that picture. A bunch of us went out to dinner, which was really awesome. Got to sit yeah, next that to Maddie and, and, and Jay Quinka, my old business partner. And yeah, we split a rainbow roll. It was nice. Yeah, it was Brothers a blast. sharing some sushi. Yeah, I would have liked to um to keep playing, but I know everyone wanted to go hang and eat, and I was hungry. Um, but I would have liked to see if I could have run the table, uh, and get the dub. But you know, it's a local; it's not that big a deal. I'm happy with how I did. Yeah, me and Steve were telling uh, Mike ahead of time, like, do don't do the split. Actually, do the reverse split, which is <laughs> suggest that oh. only first place gets prizes. Game mentioned that because um, we you mentioned that on the tournament did I, podcast did I, on yeah, Thursday, on and he's like, "We're yeah, playing for it all, all, right?" And I was like, "Huh." So for those of you who don't know, we have, uh, we have a, 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 a no second gumption. podcast that we do every week that um, is on Thursday nights and talks about what we would play in the coming weekend and our take on the meta. Um, it's a little more hair down. So um, Yeah, it's the tournament yeah. prep tier on our podcast, yep. on our Patreon. Yep. Um, and Maddie, here's your list. The Quinlan T-Town. Uh, you know, you made your Quinlan Voss's busted video a couple weeks ago and putting your money where your mouth is, coming to an event, running a version of Quinlan. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, like, I was starting to do is, like, boil down, like, what kind of cards and strategies I want to be playing and doing in Star Wars Unlimited. And, like, um, presenting threats and, like, disrupting your opponent to me seems like the the stronger way to be playing right now. Um I said originally, like, I thought Kira would be in a good spot. And I think it would have been a fine deck to play this weekend. But um, I kind of had, like, a, you know, an epiphany of, like, I want to be doing kind of something else here. And, like, I think Force Throw is just absolutely busted. Um, Kira unit, we were seeing time and time again really shine in the, the, the mono yellow deck and some other strategies. So uh, I wanted to use... Quinlan Tarkintown with that early tempo advantage to kind of pressure my opponent and then prevent them from kind of getting back in the game with some of the discard and really cheap, powerful spells uh, or, you know, uh, events and stuff like that. So this deck really hummed. Um, and great. like, honestly, most of the, most of the work is in the, like in the first 55 cards, it, you know, you're only playing Han Solo um, very rarely and in, certain matchups and same with like the falcon like it's to present a threat later um you're saying the, the first like 45 then right like the, oh the, yeah 45 the, sorry the it's, uh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah we're not in 60 card land unless you're josh from uk <laughs> boy more on that later <laughs> yeah. but yeah, yeah but yeah sorry uh in the first 45 cards like it's really everything one through five here um you're topping out yeah. a flow and you're really like finishing them off and then uh, with you know like a three two you know with a waylay and a surprise strike or something like that um, yeah it's cool so, you've got like aggression mixed with like force throw and kira and spark and then like you've got blaster you've got a little bit of smuggle with blasters in the in the l37 i love the way this deck looks to be honest I think yeah this, i love this, this concept too cool. like i think i'm pretty sure that quinlan red was the very first deck i made like just of set three like just trying to build something with like now there are two of them and stuff and it played yeah. super it well and fun I, the only problem with like yellow red um that I've found is like the top end is a little rough to grind out against some of the decks with the other better top end, which is why I, I right. moved from yellow red, um, like Anakin and Quinlan to like blue versions. Yeah. So for me, some of the, the really heavy hitters there, like when I played against Thrawn on, um, blue Anakin was just blue. like Kira and Waylay and spark, like really making sure that I, um, didn't give him an opportunity to like use that top end, you know, whether it was an early claim, um, or kind of sequencing in a way that he needed to answer something early with like with the board presence, and then I could spark or cure after and like kind of blow out the rest of his turn. Like there are a few time walk turns um, where I just didn't, you know, with Kira named something he couldn't play or sparked his only play, and so I basically got a free turn on him a few times. That was really good. Um, and then I actually, I as much as I love the split, I would have liked to see how I played into Eric's Bosk deck because we um, had some cool ideas out of the sideboard. Obviously, the discard package oh, is just makes sense, but the the shadowed intentions um, right. can present a really tough problem for them um, because Quinlan can take ahead. Like Eric, 
said his deck had more units, so maybe he could have dealt with it a little better. However, Quinlan's thing is like he takes the board first and then right. doesn't really let you get back into it. So um, I think I would have been able to defend a unit or my leader pretty well with the Shadow and Intention. So I, I would have really liked to see how that played out. However, um, did I want to play into Bosk top four when it was the night was getting on and I wanted to go eat food and see my family? I don't know. <laughs> you wanted egg rolls. Ah, dude, those egg rolls. I get the egg rolls. But yeah, I think Walk I think the decks, I think I think this kind of strategy is really good, and um, I'll be exploring this and like Fennec Red of like different types of um, red yellow combos. Uh, just to comment on what went on in the the semifinals of the OPE event, which it's definitely going to get brought up. They went to time. Uh, they had like what? four minutes for game three. And with the new tournament update, it used to be um, that your life totals in the previous game mattered, but now it's just tiebreakers game three life total. And the boss blue was able to just like drop um, a top target, flip boss, kill the guy who had the top target on him and swing for four to basically like heal to zero and do damage at the very on the very last turn of the game. So Irish Pierre is in the finals. Uh, I'm not sure against who. So if you're in game up. three, should you just not like do anything? Like, well, you've got to actually do damage to their base without. Right, right. So you just need to be ahead in the race. All right, I'm just gonna. These double loss tiebreaker rules are bad. Uh, well, it's. Not, I think everyone believes that. Yeah, but it's top cut, so like it's not double. Yeah, loss. there's it's a different. Like, no, no, I'm yeah. saying like the double loss situation stinks, and this tiebreaker is kind of weird. Well, what I mean, it's mean? pretty clean. Like, whoever like has it? whoever has more damage wins, right? Game yeah. three. That, that makes, makes sense. sense. That actually makes sense. It's just a tough. Yeah, place they were be, playing lightning. Place they only be, had four to total minutes for game three. Right. Yeah, place to yeah. be. Yeah, place um, to be. But, but they did. They did club. drag game two out really long. Dude, game um, two was a grind. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, uh, and then, I mean, I like that. There's a clear. I, I'll walk that back a little bit. I like that. There's a clear tiebreaker rule. I don't like double loss in the Swiss. Yeah, double loss is whack. Um, and then I just wanted to mention that I played Space Django deck, which we sort of already mentioned. Uh, obviously, I have a deck tech video from a couple of weeks ago. Both our teammates, John Tata and Alex Blandin, did really well at SCG with it. Um, so I used you know, their feedback and iterations to make some adjustments alongside their commentary. So um, made some changes. The one thing I say, I'll say I added was Sneak Attack. That was really great. This weekend that they didn't have, and then I saw the um, the swoop racers in the in the Euro event, the OPE event. They were running two sneak attacks in their list as well, um, and they had someone told me in our Discord that they said it was like one of the best cards in their deck. So definitely something to look at for the evolution of the Space Django deck. Uh, yeah, I I, I played. Go oh, you go, Steve. You can go, Matt. It's all I was just gonna say I played right. a few. I yeah, me too. I played a few games with it um, with your version, Mike, uh, the night before the 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 1k and the sneak attack was absolutely busted so i i concur yeah i got to have an insane turn where i did the tdr for a ruthless raider um on turn three and then on turn four i put it in there with yeah. uh the sneak attack and i like i did yeah. like probably over 30 damage i did do over 30 damage before um i even flipped Django. that's insane yeah it was it was crazy um I and do, then you can go back one sec Mike. oh yeah of course I just have, uh, I'd love uh, some feedback from the community if possible. Um, if everybody could please go take a look at that Space Django deck tech and settle a quarrel <laughs> that we were having. With <laughs> Who is that a hologram of? Is there like a way we can like poll people? Because like, I'm pretty sure it's somebody. Mike <laughs> and Maddie are trying to get somebody else. And I I just, I don't necessarily believe him. All right, go look at the Wait, Space Django I, thumbnail. I, no, Maddie was on our team. Yeah, I'm on your team. It was three, yeah. three yeah. one, Steve. Like, was, Wait, was it Mike, tilt your, Wait, Mike, tilt your head I'm a little so bit and head. the other way and put like a, a drape put a robe on. Yeah, put, a, put yeah. your Obi-Wan <laughs> robe, which we know you I mean, have. I do have an Obi-Wan robe, but it's downstairs. It's you right there. Dude, I don't know how It's raining on Camino. It's goaded. The AI stuff is really impressive. He went back into the movie and put you in. That's how freaking yeah. good Symbiote is. That was good. Suck it, Lucas. That's the real special edition. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tons of events this weekend. Wanted to shout out some of our people. Um, 
doing really well this weekend. Uh, a lot of W's up there for, for our subscribers posting in the Discord just what they did. Case tournaments, multiple case events, right? Three case events up there. There's a showcase event up there. It's just like local store showdowns. Um, we've got a Django winning. Uh, Yoda Killer won the streamed um, case event in Chicago. You can check out the stream. I think it was on Late Night Gaming and, and probably TTI. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I was out yesterday, but he won with Cad Tarkintown. We got uh, Krennic winning one in Pensacola. Uh, they split, but uh, and then DJ Deathstar shout out. He ran the Yellow Elf Emperor Palpatine. We've been working on. DJ Deathstar and I played coffee game mornings yesterday. Uh, coffee games yesterday morning before both of our events, and we both did well. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, that is awesome. He cited that as like really helpful for getting just like getting into game mode. Um, yeah, and then. You know, we love hearing how people are doing, and there's tons of events, and set threes like popping now. So, hopefully, every time we podcast, we'll have a lot of different events to talk about and like start to get a shape of the meta. What are you guys thinking in terms of like meta, like globally? We have a good mix here, but there's like Sabine's at the top, Django's at the top, Cunning Hans at the top, Cad Tarkintown's at the top, um, and then also, you know, Green Director Krennic, Yellow Pal. We're looking at this OPE event, the finals are Bosk Blue. Um, I'll try and check the other finals while you guys talk about what you think. I think Boss is. Blue is something that like might be sort of a larger piece of the pie moving forward. Yeah, I think, I think like the Django and the Sabine were kind of early on, like two that we knew we were going to see, and then it was like some variation on Control, but we weren't sure if it was Akira. I think STG early on there was like a bunch of like Iden Blues, um, and Bosk Blue I think could sort of be emerging as like the hey we're going to be the control deck that gets to draw a bunch of cards and play the top targets and feels like you have a little bit you you're able to stabilize a little bit differently than some of the other control decks which are relying on only like the sort of huge threats and removal right box has removal huge threats card advantage and like from top target you have the ability and client you have the ability to like gain the life back to like a really comfortable level because i think anybody who's played control into sabine like it's not that you die on like turn three it's that you just like actually do get to the later game but then they just keep playing two threats a turn and like keep playing like sabine doesn't stop either who the doggy and um you end up just ultimately dying at some point, right? Like, it's just it's just sort of inevitable. You're like, yeah, I guess this deck just doesn't have it. But Bosk, you're able to, like... Like, I think a lot of times people say, like, um, like, Sabine beats all the controls and, like, this and that. But, like, Bosk is one that I think can actually beat the Sabine. Presents a, presents a harder challenge. And yeah, then you got, like, things... Snoke against, like, you know, the, the Space Fleet. So he's, like, a, he's great against the... I imagine he's really good against the Tarkin deck, or against right. the Django decks. Obviously, he's good against Tarkin, but against the <laughs> Django decks. And, like, yeah, it just feels like you kind of can... If you're playing Boss Pool, you'd be like, all right, I'm going to do this against Sabine. I'm going to do this against Django. I'm going to be bigger than all the other stuff, like the Quinlans and stuff like that. Right. And you can actually sort of feel pretty good about your your matchups across the board. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like... And I think... Go on, Steve, go. I was just going to say, I think the further we get into the meta, the more we're going to see... a on the rest of the control decks because they're starting to figure out those right. numbers and what they have to be and what avenues they need to take. Whereas maybe like a week ago or two weeks ago, I guess two weeks when we did the I was still very early in the set in the meta. So that's when the more aggressive decks are always gonna shine. Right. Yeah, that's a great point, Steve. I had the same kind of trouble of like, what am I actually supposed to be leaning in towards? And if you try to lean in to beat everything, you beat nothing. And if you pick the wrong thing you're in a tough spot so i agree i think yep. we're gonna see the meta kind of slow with I, w sabine and Django are still insane but i think that you know people are gonna try to beat them and then the the boss deck goes over the top and yada yada but like what i wanted to say too about the boss deck is like it is just such a good evolution of the old like you know event only iden deck where like the effective life total was so much higher well you know with doubling on the bounties and stuff like that he has the same principles there but with a little more game um, with some of the new, you know, technology that's come out in two sets. So um, I think it's a really solid plan. It's one that, like, I remember when we did the Bosk thing, like, we, like, a lot of people knew, like, Boss Blue was probably going to be good, but it takes, you know, the pioneers to, like, make that deck, you know, put it on the table and, and get the reps and, like, bring it forward. And, like, 
so I'm excited to like try all these lists that we're seeing and and um and kind of co- like collaborate with the group now that they've kind of pushed it, you know. So shout out to them for like going out and doing yeah, it. Yeah, I love when there's big events like this and just lots of events because there's tons of stuff to try. There's ton- tons of stuff to like modify and iterate and make our own and play test and just try and get a, a grasp on the meta. Yeah, we have context now. Yeah, and so here's the top eight of that large 200 person event. Um, it was a sub- it was one Sabine green, one Sabine yellow, a Cad red, oh, a two yellow. Django Tarkin Towns, a yellow palp, a blue palp, and a blue bosk. And the finals are blue palp versus blue bosk. The the classic Euro control mirror finals. Yeah, the exact opposite of what we'd probably see in uh, in New England, <laughs> yeah. where people love their Sabine and now Django. Um, yeah, I mean, I like like we just were talking about the boss deck. Obviously, has game. Um, and if you're into one of these slower metas, I totally see why um, why you'd be on Palp. I actually really like that yellow version. I wonder what would have happened if they didn't have the tie, like if it was an untimed three met games. Like, yeah, because there if, are so many. Yeah, someone things, scooped so. earlier. Um, I yeah. got to imagine that the boss is pretty favored into blue Palp, but I really don't know. Um, but we could see uh, Irish Pierre taking it down. We'll have to see. I think we'll be done by the time the game ends but this is a pretty interesting meta breakdown this is all the decks that are like about three percent or more of the meta at this event there were 28 anakins it had a 47 percent win rate and zero in the top eight and like conversion rates a little tough when it's top eight because like it's really you don't know yeah it's not necessarily uh, indicative of um you know the 200 people itself. is a lot. Yeah, I'd look at was, like the top 16 if I like. Right. If, I was if looking there was for a top conversion 16, rates. conversion would be better, or like just call it six and two or better. Like how many people went yep. six and two or better? Um, this event chose to run limitless, which, um, you know, it has it has a lot of the superiority stuff with the deck integration of deck lists in terms of like you can I can click on Anakin Skywalker and see how every person did, and then I can also see wow. all right how many people played. Um, you know, three force throw versus two force throw or whatever, and what were the win rates of those people? So, like, the statistics you can get into on Limitless are actually insane. Probably would make some good content digging into some of that stuff, um, especially when, if we had a lot of events. Yeah, that, like, when, I mean, uh, I know we're on Mela and that's the world we're going to be in, and hopefully they integrate some of this, some of this stuff, but um, when it was, like, Limitless was the thing people were trying, the content around in these events, as we're seeing that we can pull this up, um, is just so superior. So hopefully they can get some of that stuff in so we can shine a light on what's going on better. Definitely. Um, 62% win rate, win rate for Sabine, put two in the top eight out of 12. Um, 66% win rate for Cad Bane. That's cool. Only one top eight, but that's an insanely high win rate. And then uh, Palp, the Palp won, 62.5% win rate, uh, converting two in the top eight, including now one was in the top four and one was in the finals. So yeah, definitely some Palpatine Palp, set three Palpatine both side playing both sides. That's kind of cool. Yeah, low low win rate. Yeah. Um, one of the lowest on here, but <laughs> yeah, sadly, uh, it is a tough deck. It's a tough deck to run. Um, tough deck to figure out for sure. Yeah, it's a cool one though. You did. It's a cool you concept. I'm so glad they made it. And like it's, I was saying this yesterday. Like it's a leader. We'll go back to every set you know in in every meta yeah, just to see but in. it's right. an, it's yeah i mean i i'm excited for that yellow palp like i can't wait to see what you guys come up with it and and take you know um what josh did in this event and like kind of yeah and see all the angles it's possible he didn't really even think much about Sabine because it doesn't seem like a huge part of the meta over there Correct. i think he played right. it like once right six percent yeah. um but like with us we have to take it into account. That's yeah, why I'm trying to. Always. It would be like the third, like Anakin for around over here. Like Anakin, Django's in like a good spot. I think Anakin would be like the Sabine number. Yeah, and Sabine would be the Anakin number. Right. Yeah. Or close to it. But or, like, that's yeah, why I'm trying. Even, now there are two of yeah. them to try and get like an early five drop um, to kill something or to get a seven drop Cad Bane um, or Maul to kill something big or, you know, that's steal some cool. stuff. I think the Cad Bane cheat out is. The move yeah i because still actually like, have vaders over maul but like um dj that death star was testing malls uh i think yeah. vader's better at stabilizing but you know maul gets lots the of combo. contests but yeah cad yeah. cad's insane like being able to if you're you're behind he can often steal three guys right, right. steal yeah, the guys kill insane. the leader especially if it's early because they're all like 
little booties or they yeah. got hurt, you know. The the one thing that's cool about the mall is you can put the damage on like say you like I'm assuming you have Bazine. Like, you Bazine into Maul. Oh, yeah. It's all Underworld. It's like full McClunky yeah. Underworld. The only Imperials are Vader and, and Super You could even, right like, now. do Bib, which would be probably not good. But, like, you, you port the damage over to that thing. And then if you draw another one, like, you could have Maul and, like, something else, which would be kind of nuts. Yeah. I, I don't like, hate do Bib. The kill. Yeah. Um, I have the Kintan Intimidator. Got it. Yeah. He played that into me. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, we can start looking at some of these lists, especially the 8-0. This is You Can Call Me Al's. Uh, Sabine, when he ran the table in Swiss, went 8-0. and Justin, he's got three Admiral Yolaren in this main deck. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, it's a cool idea to get the... I like the, the Anthem effects. I have the Donna right now in mine, so that's a sort of different take on it. I think um, I really like Fighters for Freedom, so that's a hard cut for me. Although he does have them in the sideboard, and I really like the rebel synergy with everything. Um, he's got the spec forces and the R twos too, so I get what he's kind of doing. He's he's going wide, um, and Yolaren makes those guys kind of harder to pick off. And then obviously the big is cool. It's Big-booties. also cool that he can like play a spec force, maybe like on turn two, like another two drop, and then like bright hope it. Like draw a card that's kind of nifty, like right. an R two or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and so it makes a little extra value to Bright Hope. It makes Spec Force like a clone deserter. Like it's a two three with this guy, um, yeah. and then so it and then what it can do is um, it can shut down like village people for a turn and then hit it and not die back. Right. You know? Yeah, so I think the only the only sort of immediate feedback I have, I like I think there's a lot of good things in this list is that the two copies of Red Three are sort of anti synergistic with this because. You're trying to go um, wide. If you're going wide, you might as well get the extra. And also the three bright hopes protect red three too. So I I would say like that'd be the one thing I'd look at. Obviously I have my list that I, I really like. Um and then the other thing in the sideboard is like the um Ewing reinforcement is really interesting against some of these control decks. That's something that I thought about. I think a Delphi, the four six ship is also pretty good there. I also don't have timely in my main, like dances in my sideboard a bit. But I like a lot of what's going on here. The dark saber in the board is an interesting one for me because in the I like it in the mirror, but post board in the mirror it's not as good because people have confiscate. Although that's somewhat outdated, right? People like you don't have confiscate in this sideboard, right? So it could be just the type of thing where like it actually dark saber sort of morphs from being like this incredibly powerful thing in the main, recognizing it's not very good in the Django against the Django deck, so it goes away completely, and people have confiscate, so you don't want it to then being like, oh, maybe it's actually a sideboard card. For the mirror, because the mirrors you don't have room for the consoles. So it's one of those things that the metas evolve, and you just kind of have to anticipate what you might see. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of Sabine's. Sabine's. Got, I mean, it's got the it's got the heavy hitters, right? You've got the K twos and the cat. It's got the metal ceremonies. He hasn't he hasn't like cut any of the very important cards, which sometimes you do see in the Sabine lists of like, oh, they'll go two metal, or there won't be rebel assault. Like you have to play those cards. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's like definitely. Yeah, it's interesting. The Ewing for Wrecker plus a one drop sounds really cool. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to say real quick is like, I you learn's a great thing to try because like one of the things we found about Metal Ceremony is it makes all that math like barrage math and stuff like that kind of wonky. So um, I thought that that was kind of like a cool. Yeah, it's like built in. Yeah, it's like half a Metal Ceremony like- in, on your two five. Yeah, they have to target him with the barrage then. Yep. And then the other thing real quick is like, it, it is cool the Dark Saber iteration that you just highlighted, Justin, because that's something you've been talking about for a really long time with sideboarding of like, like I think one of the old examples was like Fang Fighter, and it's like mm-hmm. the leveling of it all. So like now the yeah. lists are almost leveling where it's like, okay, right. Confiscates, we're not going to play Dark Saber. Oh, they they know we're taking out Dark Saber, we're going to put it in the sideboard. You know, it's right. it's really interesting. Although I will say like Boss being a, a player... Like, if Confiscate's not in my deck right now at all, and then I'm seeing Boss, and I'm like, yeah, it's going to go back in, and R2's going to go back in more heavy. Those are the cards I really want to be playing to dig for my Confiscates and Timelies and stuff like that. So yeah. the, the sideboard could could emerge as a different type of thing. I've been high on Daring Raid, but, like, maybe that's something that's just you don't have room for, and you lean on Bright Hope for the Django matchup. So kind of see where it goes. 
All right, and here's that blue bosk we were, you know, alluding to and talking about uh, while watching the stream. But this is a blue bosk that is just like full on not going to mess around with Django with the three perilous main and three more make opening side and yeah. a third Snoke side and a clan Saxon gauntlet side, which is like kind of problematic. Uh, yeah, that's if, really if people don't know how to deal with it. Um, the other thing I thought was pretty wild was just the three merciless contests. Yeah. Just all the edict effects. I, um, to be honest, I love this list. I think yeah, this, this is, is really like nice. so clean and like you got the card draw with Deathmark and um, Pershing both as, as three O's, mm -hmm. so that's great. So you're not going to run out of cards, but you also have like some legit bulk here, like Palp, Snoke, Avenger, Palp, Trials Snoke, and, and Event. So like three Palp, three Avenger. Three Palp. You know, lot. he's I, not skimming on anything. Like you said, it's clean. The, People play control lists. They play a million one ofs. You know, yep. and you've this got the entrenched and perilous positions really good. You still have the one restock, so you can play that thing. You've got the Gar Saxon Gauntlet. Tell like that card's really good. Yeah, um, you've got like Force Choke if you want to go into these like you know, play removal on the first turn of the game. I don't know, man. This list looks good. Yeah, uh, there's a lot to love here. I think the cleanness of it's nice. One card that I would try as like my extra card, and probably Pierre already like figured out he didn't want it, is like I wonder if um the fine edition, fine edition would be is it, exactly yeah. what I was thinking too. Yeah, yeah. so that's the only card. What like, does that do? It, it gets an zero. Yeah, go ahead. You, you can go. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, that one's cool. Zero cost when you when you've taken someone out, you can play an upgrade from either your hand or disc or either discard for not paying the aspect penalty. It's just like a way to like rebuy on some of this stuff. Um, so that would be one thing I would try, like as some a newcomer coming into this um, deck form, but using, you know, this deck, this very clean, solid deck list is like my um, baseline. Like I'll probably sleep yeah, this up. Yeah, it's a really talk. good baseline yeah. to have moving forward because it's like, all right, sometimes these can, like Steve said this earlier, sometimes you don't know what to do with these control games quite as much right but right. um like now you've got like a really clean thing you see like the the max edict effects the what's the name of that card the merciless, merciless contest, contest and then um power of the dark side yeah i got this hyper foil fine edition Dude, yeah so there you go Ooh. and like that, one point i want to bring up is like that's what you should be doing when you get lists like when you get one of our lists or anyone out there like sleeve up a list that you like and then start tweaking it even if you go back to their list, like getting on onboarding yourself means trying out the other cards that you think might, you know, might be good and are not. And you understand why, because like when we talk about deck building, the deck is so much more than 60 cards. And like Justin saying with, um, you know, the Sabine example of like different cards that are coming in, when you onboard yourself, trying out those cards, you know, which cards are going to swap in and out as the meta develops. So like. If I was somebody who's interested in this archetype, I'd sleeve up Pierre's list, and then I would get to cracking on different little tweaks. And like, if you come back to his exact sixty, great, that's awesome. But now you know the extra stuff, and you have like a database in your head, which I think is the most important thing about about card games. And like, the list is just a, a snapshot of what you want to be doing for a specific tournament that you've set a goal for. Yeah, but a corollary to that. Part, go ahead, Steve. I was gonna say the. Uh, the important part too that you're talking about is those extra one or two cards that you're going to be changing are very, especially if you're playing control, very dependent on what your local meta is, you know? So right. like where we play, it's going to be the percentage of the players, the percentage of whatever at like great stores is going to be a lot higher than necessarily what he's playing over in the UK. So even right. though this deck may win the entire event, like you're still going to want to change those three to five cards based yep. on what you're expecting to see at your performance. Yeah, and not only that, but the meta is going to change based on something like this. Like, now right. everyone's going to know. So, like, anyone yeah. telling you to play their exact list is nuts. Like, you should yeah. be making adjustments, and, like, right. you can't just go playing last week's list. Like, you need to make yeah, adjustments. It. At least yeah. try them. And, like, if you do end up back in there, it's not because the list was, you know, necessarily perfect in perpetuity. It's, like, you know, you've got to find the right variation for, like Maddie said, the thing you sleeve up for. Yeah, entrenched. I will say just as a commentary here, the entrenched is interesting with the six edicts. Like, is he playing the entrenched on like Childston to make him like even bigger? 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure sometimes, but there is a little Nambo client. with Merciless and yeah. having just good, the fact that now you have six because it used to be like, okay, I'll play like I'll play the powers first, then I'll like entrench something more in the mid game. But like you're gonna keep drawing those sacrifice a unit things, and then mm. also like I guess the other thing there is like if you play on your own guy, like you sacrifice your own entrenched guy too because the with the Merciless new one is, yeah. is both. So that's something I'd be maybe thinking about like. Would that be better? I know it's card disadvantage early, but like, would force choke be better there? I don't know. That seems like a little weird that entrenched is in there. Yeah, the one thing that I found about some of these decks when I was playing Super Laser is sometimes those edict effects become really dope after the bar- like after the oh, after yeah. laser block. Like so like, no you doubt. can use yeah. the the entrenched, but that is a great point. And like that is probably and entrenched often bridges you to the Super Laser Blast. Like, yeah, that you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can I'm also not like super yeah. well versed with these control decks, so like that's, like, that's the perfect point. Shot. Yeah, I think the thing that it does do yeah. though is it makes you have to consider the timing of when to play some of these cards, which does add a layer of complication to the list. Yeah, um, but let's check out this yellow pal. Fifty-five cards. Josh uh, Friedenberg continues to push the envelope on how many cards he can fit in a deck that we can criticize. He... Well, I will say, is it intentional that it was fifty-four for a while, and we were like. Oh, 54 is crazy. Like, how could you ever play 54? Is the 55, yeah. is the 55th card, like... A big middle yeah, finger? You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I will say, like, so I talked earlier it's that I've outlook. taken my yellow palp towards a more underworld-based one. Um, but I do like this Separatist version. It's just there's not that many Separatist cards. But he's got Poggle. He's got Confederate Courier. He's got P-38. And then he has that Droid Commando, the 4-3 Ambusher for... Um, for three which is really good it's just that's it those are the separatists so if you don't and like obviously you can make battle droids with poggle they're they're separatists but if you can't get that online the droid commando gets a lot worse um yeah and he's got Cobb banth to find those two drops and i really love confederate courier but um it's just a little trait spread for me i just like it a little bit tighter on the traits Maybe we need to push it to 60. Add some more Underworld. Just go full I, I magic. I will say, if you CCG are going to go past yeah. 50, right, just to play this no, game a little bit. Never. No, but if you, I know, but if okay. you were Palp and a deck that cycles through with um, Cobb Bant and like, mm, I guess, and Vader's, like, I guess there's a world where maybe that's like not that worst thing ever, like, because it's Palp. But yeah, but don't, don't you want to draw your. Your yeah, I, I'm, like, I wouldn't more play more than 50, enemy. but I'm just trying to like get in the head of Josh Freeman Birch here. <laughs> Good luck there. Yeah, I mean, the numbers change in a small way, but it's like more non separatists, you know, right. more non two drops for Cobb. It's just super laser text. Well, like one principle that Justin's talked about from, you know, Star Wars CCG, not that I played it, was like the deck tracking and like. You know, knowing where the bottom of your deck is, and so I think there are like, and I was playing like um, a lot of the bounty stuff this week leading up. I thought maybe I'd want to play like enticing rewards and and um, bounty hunters, Corey, and like they're like I cycled through my deck like more than once, like one point whatever. So it, there are interesting things that could come out. Now, do you want to play more than fifty? I don't know, but um, just kind of something like to think about. The dodgeball meme. It's a bold strategy. Yeah, yeah see how it pays off for him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he took it to top four. So um, I think it's a cool yeah, he's deck. A good player. We were talking about Yellow Palp yesterday, um, and you've been talking about it for a while. So like, it is cool now. Yeah, the- We've been talking about it. We see it do well. Shout out to Josh. And like again, like I'm probably gonna sleeve up mics, but like this, it, I'm gonna steal some ideas from this when I do it. Like I like the three some devastators of the crazy because it's like if Palp gets to like turn eight aren't you winning like always like all right let's just like slam devastator. i think the big thing, I think I he's know. predicting this the bit the, the control the uk it's control so method. good in the mirror yeah yeah oh like i think the big yeah. thing for me is no relentless because yeah, that yeah, was always like all or problematic kind of right now. That is a great point, Steve. I feel like I was watching those games, and like there was a point where Relentless would have been pretty decent. I feel like get the fifty-six, maybe even fifty-seventh card in there, guys. Oh, yeah, get it up. All right, and here, so I guess I spoke too soon. It's Palp. Ver- they didn't play the other top four yet. It's Palp four. It's so it's this blue Palp versus one of the Jangos oh. uh, in the other semifinals. They staggered them for the stream. 
Oh, would um, they give them like a lunch break or something? No, they just did one top four, then the other top four, so they could stream all of it. Got it. Like they used to do with the Magic Pro Tour. So this is the Blue Palp. Um, you know, this very, uh, it seems like very cloud. There's nothing too spicy in here. The Traitorous is. Um, he's got Perilous and Traitorous. Um, he's got the client. I don't know. It's like your classic official, lots of control, blue one. No Merciless Contest in this one. Yeah, yeah, no, no overwhelming like, barrage because yeah, you don't play any units to barrage off. Of. Yeah, that's one thing with Palp that I've I've done too is like go up and down on barrage. Yeah, like if you look, yeah. it's like it's Black Sun Starfighter and then it's Vader. Like there's no units from three to seven. Yeah, yeah. Then you got wild. a bunch of removal, but they, I mean, pretty wild. One of the things that I had trouble with in like middle of set two with Kira was like not having things to barrage. So like I do get that. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. No, I don't. I don't think it's wrong. I think it's just. It's just a, such an interesting back. point of like freeing Green yourself up and being like, "Hey, like I'm gonna cha challenge some basic assumptions. Like I'm not gonna play barrage in my blue um, green villain deck. Like I feel like it's an auto include for so many people, but like try it. Like you know, what? Like there's no point in not. And he well, we're seeing these control decks player. sort of starting to rise. So yeah, I think they're maybe very comfortable with what they're trying to do and then like these control mirrors and then they're recognizing like i mean there was a sabine that won eight oh and it, i imagine it probably lost to one of these control decks so like there's not it's not like a drawing dead situation maybe it's perilous position is is the card that's really is like the goat. Is the i think Django took it out but yeah this is the one where i would want poggle i well, think cloned. he's he's an official um, you yeah. can get the engine on a little bit easier with all the removal. Like you can protect the the engine a little bit. So I think I would like Poggle in this one. I'd like to try some blue palp with Poggle. Yeah, I like Poggle. I think that's a good call. All right, then we get Cad Red. Cad Red, like we said, did really well at the event. And um, Justin, you've met messed with Cad a bunch. I know, like, we yeah. was really excited to dig back into Cad. Um, he said he posted a video maybe with Cad that uh, Yoda Killer, one of his Patreon subscribers, like the list was really close to what Wu has posted in his Patreon or the video. Um, he's got some interesting things here, like the yeah, Guavian beautiful. antagonizer. Um, it's a little surprising. I think I would probably rather be on Kintan for the yellow and just the one four, not giving my opponent a card, but you know, this is all good stuff here. All good underworld stuff. Plus ruthless Raider, which is an absolute bomb. Yeah. And he's got the crazy Jabba how thing. Mm -hmm. Crazy. How little red there is. How he is in the deck. Like you're really just playing it for the relentless yeah, Raider. One card. Well. It's one. I mean, blaster, but blaster is also yellow. Oh, right. punishing one. Yeah, yeah pun it's punishing uh, one and ruthless raider, and like you, you don't even need to necessarily run the antagonizer, like we said. Um, yeah, Jabba for the extra trick, right? Like he pulls, uh, bamboozle. He pulls McClunky. He pulls now there are two of them and pulls Waylay. This is like a lot of tricks yeah. for him. Oh, he pulls bamboozle. That's nice. yeah. Yeah. No, it's cool. That's again. nice. I, think, I like oh, that pulling bamboozle is cool because then you get the card advantage. That's really neat. And I then, think yeah, um, just, he pulls yeah, sneak attack too out of the board. Yeah, that's this is cool. Jabba's I mean, I think good, the man. Jabba the Jabba works. I was trying to work with Jabba for a while with Jabba into now there are two of them. Um and then like Cad or any the underworld card. Um but I just couldn't get it to be consistent. I had trouble like just drawing like the unit or like you draw you don't draw the the Jabba. Like you're just always missing one piece. Mm -hmm. Um but this looks really good cuz it's got like a pretty proactive plan. Yeah, and, and a million got, other like, tracks too, and all those other things, yeah. and you've got the the Forlom, Zuckus thing, and like, it seems like it's pretty well suited to what it wants to do. Looks good. Yeah, I like it. Awesome. Um, and I know I know Wu's excited to work on it, and I'm sure we'll we'll be spending a lot of time seeing if we can develop this and figure out the best the best list here. And then just the top end of Ruthless Raider Cad is has been crazy. Yeah, it's been um, crazy. Yeah, Cad's good, so, so good, man. And with Sawyer, obviously, always really good. Yeah, yeah, he was playing it last night against Alex, so there'll definitely be some some games and some content around it, I'm sure. Yeah. It's kind of cool, like, the Jabba Bamboozle thing. Like, that's something we never thought about. That could have been a set two, like, Yellow Boba thing. We just never thought of it because it's like it doesn't pop up on the deck list generator. But that's really neat. Yeah, we're kind of, kind of a, you know, beholden to that thing, telling us what to do. Um, right. Yeah, it's always nice to explore the tricks uh, with Jabba. I like Jabba. I've been a fan of Jabba since set one, and I hope he continues to see play. Anything that gets stuff out of your deck, it's great. 
Also ate booty. Yum. Ate booty. Uh, all right. So here's that yellow Sabine. I don't think there's anything like two nuts in here. We've seen Sabines like play the daring raids. They're really good against Django. Um, he's yep. got liberated slaves here uh, for the extra three five. Um, yeah, it's then... just the zero four cause, and then leaning into the actual just curve nature of the deck yep. and like the sneak attacks. That was when I looked at this list. I was like, all right, this makes a lot of sense. Because you're getting so when I first when set three first came out, like I thought like yellow Sabine was gonna be really good. But it's like one of those things where you just like you have trouble like sort of finding your baseline and you're like, all right, I wanna play sneak attack, I wanna play like surprise 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 strike, um card like daring raid could be good. Like I just don't know how it all fits, and then you got four cause. Um but this looks really I'm excited to try this one. I think it looks really you got like crafty smugglers. You know, with all these Django decks like tapping yeah, you down the, your things, you now you got six, shield boys. six shielded guys. You got six three fives and fighters for freedom. Yep. And you've got enough rebel like fleet lieutenants there with a few rebels. You've got it's a lot to like here. I like that the sneak attack frees you up from just being like a regular curve deck. Like I, you know, like one thing that we've seen get eaten alive is decks that just straight curve out, and so you do like the early curve or like a two. Three, two, two, and then like your sneak attack is letting you like, you know, sneak out a K two and then also do something, you know. So I I like that like it kind of frees you up to like go wide. Um, yeah, and use all your cards, like, right? That's what aggro wants to do is like use every like, single one of their cards. If yeah. you end the game, you lost with a bunch go of Nova. cards in your hand. Yeah, right. Uh, I this like cool. uh, I like the added value L three has gotten now to that Cad's actual no card that mm -hmm. actually yeah. do capture. Yeah. Mike, you should revisit Jane, uh, not Django. Uh, what the heck's his name? Lando, Lando, and Zori, and just go absolutely Nova. Yeah, and then you don't I've, have to worry about it. Maybe I'll see if if we got any help with uh with set three. I'm not sure that we Dude, did. Red, in the red, red yellow, yellow seems early. close. I know, but these are all yeah. other than R two. It's all, it's all set one stuff. Two yeah. Sabine. Sabine. Yeah, but unit. and you wouldn't even run Sabine and Lando because what you want to do on four oh, is like Lando. cheat out something huge like like a yeah. zori or a big falcon or something the r2 is a big i mean you know, yeah, yeah i'll try it with r2 um so this is the hot. this is the swoop racers version of django um you know they've got some some innovations that we had last weekend um you know the the crafties the one tie advance and imperial interceptor there there aren't confederate tri-fighter which i'll still maintain like i don't like you know, it doesn't do anything against the best heal card in the game, Vigilance. They literally get to destroy it and then still heal the five. And then heal. Right. So, like, I'm I'm not saying it's not good in every situation, but it's not good against some of the best cards. Um, yeah, so I I mean, don't, you prefer don't Wolf, wolf right? right? I like Wolf. Wolf because expect, it turns it off when played or when attacked. So after they like, that's the thing. It's like play, a static effect wolf. versus yeah. like what wolf does wolf is like yeah, a trick i only thing. i played against blue bosk and like i'll great. say this if, if irish pierre game, right? like influences this this meta at all and people are playing more bosk like i played against eric he dropped a top target or like he activated his client and he was going to flip bosk and do the heal 10 and i just slammed wolf and it's and it's done for the turn. He has to. Yep. He has to go next yeah, if he wants to true. heal. And he also and has to. Wolf. And he has to kill the wolf. And if it's not his boss flip turn or something, yeah. or like I can tap down his boss at the start. Of, like I can also just like claim if he does anything, wow. attack with right. wolf next turn, and he and he still can't heal. So the wolf was really great for me in the one matchup. I boarded it in. Um, I I just know I don't like Confederate Tri Fighter because I don't think it does what I what I need it to do. Um, he's on swoop. Uh, these guys are on swoop downs instead of breaking in. Um, which done twelve events, which I think is it's is low good. for ISB agent. Low. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I. <gasps> but it's also possible that they don't always want to ISB on turn one. Um, yeah, you kind of save them, right? I know, like it's, it's such a cheap tempo play. I I was doing that a little bit more aggressively, like like in our video, Justin. I was like always doing that, and yeah. some of the round, lines I took yesterday were like just running out a crafty, a cartel, or a Kylo tie, and then doing it later, and on. then using it later, like um, especially on the play where I can like put out a two drop and then still have initiative. I can tap down with ISB agent the next turn, um, which or is even really like great. Turn three, like yeah. playing a three. Drop. Just it's just if like you using it as dark. Yep, just using it as a spell alongside something else works really well. Um, so I, that's probably um, making the 12 a little more palatable, but I still think that's crazy low. Um, and I I like breaking in. I think, I think like, you know, 
you don't just not having to go through every sentinel and people are going to be playing a lot of bright hope um i played a quite a yeah. few bright hope decks yesterday and you can deal with the first one but the second one can right. be a lot tougher it can be a pain in the ass. And it does make sense like that's the card that you might look at like shifting some of your spells to that like even if you're not dropping down to 12 and just straight up cutting it like if you wanted to get more surprise strikes or um yeah surprise strike Sneak attack, sorry, in your deck. Um, like breaking in is probably the card that you could look at. Like, all right, is it necessarily crucial that you have to play three? Um, like the plus two versus the plus three is a big difference. So that's that's that is interesting. That like you know, obviously you're gonna play three surprise strikes. You're gonna play three triple dark raids. Like that's six spells. Oh, there's no daring. He, does, raid. he doesn't have daring raid, which is yeah, my next or breaking. No. Yeah, wow. the no daring aid is the daring raid is a little bit more wild because now you're not going like. One three one one drop plus daring raid to Tarkin Town something problematic. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like more no daring raid and then like mm, yeah. Mm. One I, card I like and I know you're already on it, but I just want to like from someone who's only played the deck a little bit. Like I love the tank. Like I was playing your version and like there was a point where like if I hit the tank off my TDR, I just like win the game because they like they swerve into space and like they do that whole thing and you can just like really kind of get them there so like that um i'm glad yeah. like, to see i had a couple it. double exploits on the tank there was one game where i had all three uh isb agents and i'm just like happily yeah. eating too um anytime you can eat a ruthless raider late game is like really great to do the the trick the extra triggers did you ever try Genosin? Is it just not good because it's the, the the body stinks? Because like it's kind of a similar principle of like. Yeah, we just don't need this... the bounce. Really, okay. is, is all yeah. it is. It's just, um, and you don't it's ever like, want to. Like, okay. You don't want to eat your board because those ISB agents they tap down opposing units. Right, right. right. So you're not like dying to blow up your board. Because um, they're gonna, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna like suicide into whatever. But like, the with... tank just as a five drop seems good. Like, like yeah. Knock it off the thing. Guy. Yeah, I love the tank. Yeah, oh, yeah, I just slammed it against Sabine yesterday. Like I ate one guy, I tapped down their Sabine, and then my yeah, Ruthless Raider yeah, killed the Sabine five, the next turn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. I think Django is insane. Like every yeah, like so it's good. so funny. It's like Sabine is the deck that everyone wants to like get reps into. And like I I'm seeing more and more like that change to Django, at least on in our internal testing. Yeah, and it's this like is the, it's like a big stress tester. This is Dave's version, which is pretty close to what Tata yeah, ran yeah. Um, last week, where he has the one main interceptor, one main advance. He does have the swoop down main, um, and he has a van braces in main. And the, this looks very similar, right? Maybe a yeah. I, I th actually think it's like one only one card off of what Tata ran last week, and it's the right. swoop down. I'm pretty sure. Um, I think maybe Tata ran two waylay. Um, but either way, it's it's almost identical. Um, it's got a lot of this. I mean, you know, the lists aren't going to be that different. Um, but and Dave snuck in at six two. I think it was the only six two to sneak in. So pretty cool. Um, must feel good, especially cool. since he's in the top four. Um, but yeah, deck is great. Um, I think it's really strong. I'm locked for worlds. I'll be playing this. Booyah! Uh, is, that, is that official? <laughs> I mean, worlds is going to be set five, so I don't know. But I hope. <laughs> How many ships are we getting until then? Uh, I feel like this is a broken record, but you know, every time I think, oh, we're probably, we're probably hit the max of what we're gonna do. Uh, two weeks ago, we were at twelve twenty-seven. We've had you know seventy-five, wow. almost seventy-five more, and it's like fluctuated. That that it's been like up and down on thirteen hundred, um, as people end their month, their final months, and and rejoin or whatever. But we've got thirteen hundred members officially right now, or we did last night when I was making these slides. Nice. Yeah, people are really digging it, which is awesome. And vibes. the crazy thing is, like, there's just no, there's no, like, there's not a lot of arguing. Like, there's no mean spirited arguing. Yeah. It's like all about the game. And you know, I don't know if we mentioned this last time, but through election season, there was not a single political conversation in the Discord. It's just like everyone chilling, talking about cards, having fun. Our community's insane. We're so lucky. Like, it, it's unbelievable. I stop saying I don't have enough time to drink the rosé because this that's telling me contrary. Out of beliefs. <laughs> how many? How many? Can we divide that up into thirteen hundred? That that bottle, probably. Probably it's fifteen liters. Jesus, I don't mm. even know how many ounces that is. Get on that man. Um. All right. So oh we'll God, do a couple questions. Funny. We've only got a couple minutes left before I have to go. Um, from Mark. Uh, in the UK, I've seen a number of people hot on the bagging wagon for this new set three card. I'm interested to hear your takes on for what makes it so good. 
and uh, I think this is commonly appreciated as one of the best cards in set three. Yeah, I, when I did my top ten, I wanted to put it on. I did it as like an honorable mention, um, and a few times we'd mentioned like this card is just like so insane because I think the deal is like the tapping is like really strong. Like just the fact that you always get that. If you think about make an opening, there were so many games because like X, there's not that many X twos in this game. Um, so like there are there's some and there's some heavy hitters, but like there's a lot where you just want it to sort of stick for more than just that one turn. Yeah. So like the minus two, it's like yeah, it's minus two, but then they just get they go right back. Like you're just yeah. like you're you, not really. You can't doing make much. an opening Poe. <laughs> like you're right, still taking exactly. six, and then you still have to kill them. So like this is something that it can go on leaders. Um, and it stops them from like being, you know, pushing that damage for a while. It's like it's good against like cards like Overwhelming Barrage, where you get to like knock down something. Like I, the Boba ban, I was full supportive of it, but I think this card would have been actually like pretty good against like Boba. Like, like oh, you tap yeah. your Boba, now you can't, you can't like untap your resources. Yeah, you can't pop right. off this turn. I mean, we saw yeah. that um, No I, Good to Me Dead, one of the best things to do in the mirror. Too, you know, like. like yeah. On unit like needs to tap to like get the extra resource. Sabine can't ping and it's like delays them. It's based like a heal five sometimes. It's great. Feels like a jacked up version of that JT. Mike wanted to play in Ray Blue. Yeah. What was that? Oh yeah. Unexpected escape. Yeah. And like right. Yeah. yeah, Exactly. And this is like yeah. It's a great version. It's as opposed to like some jank version. So yeah. Right. Yeah. We're playing like that just to get a tap down. Yeah. Yeah. I think perilous is is very very good. Um, you could almost think it's like choose two modes, like tap a unit, make a unit minus two for the remain. Like you know what I mean? It's yeah, almost yeah. like like one of those like double. Um, right. Yeah, the mono legend modes cards in the first ones. Yeah. All right, Steve. Do you think we need more Obi after seeing results from case tournaments, SCG, other events? A trend in the meta: a lot of decks ping Quinlan, Cad, Django, Boss, Gray, etc. Do you think Obi Wan sees more play to counter these ping decks? Maybe even Luke. Maybe even Luke, since he can shield units to protect them. I think we've seen more Luke. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely like Obi, and I just wish I could figure out how to make it work. Um, I think the important difference between, say, Obi and Luke is with all of the ping decks, it makes the yields probably worse on Luke because they can just pop it a lot easier as opposed to, like, if you had, like, a shield on a Bright Hope, they'd have to attack into it twice. Now they can ping the shield to pop the shield and then attack into it. I do like Obi in general. I think... The fact that we haven't actually seen like a blue green here anywhere for the most part um, is kind of telling, and I think there's definitely some options there. I, I don't know. I know one of the smaller tournaments you posted results earlier. Um, OB. There was an OB. I saw yeah. yeah. First place OBCN. Um, I think there's some. I know we talked about this on the mini pod a little bit, and it's something I've kind of been working on behind the scenes with one of our office hours guys. But the same way that we talked about earlier, control is starting to develop because they're trying to they're starting to find where they'd be and how to I think blue green will eventually get there. Um, just nobody's figured out. Marshall's in the house. He's like an Obi Wan. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I tried to get him to go ask my wife for uh, Obi Wan advice. And he did, but now he's back and back and better than ever. Well, I didn't want to say the word because if I say the word, he's going to want to go eat another one. It's yeah. not even eight o'clock, so I don't want him eating a lot of those. That's like when but I say cookie around. That's what that's the word that I'm trying not to say. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Again, the dogs. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah, I, I mean, like Obi's an interesting spot because like you can turn off the Tarkin Town play, but your guy still gets tapped against Django. So it is interesting. Um, but I agree. Like, I think that is an area that needs to get explored. Um, and I think these kind of mid range decks just need a lens to look at and they're starting to get that lens. I think the combination of conquer Dawn and bright hope right now is just backbreaking to all of these Django. And if anybody's playing like, um, Tarkin phantom tie type decks, there, like just how Mike was saying earlier, you know, you can get through the first Bright Hope really easily. It's the second one that's a problem. Like, when you can mm-hmm. do Conquer Dawn into that, like, you pretty much just lock up space completely. Yeah. And, there's... and a Sentinel Tarkin. that's not going to get Tarkin Town because you can wipe it away is is interesting. That's a great point, Steve. Exactly. Yeah, that and, and Luke just, like, creating those doubles, like you said. Um. Kylo, why isn't Kylo getting more love? Why, why is, oh, sorry, why is Kylo getting no love? What is he missing? McFrigo asks. I think he's missing, he's missing booty. Ray. 
<laughs> missing Ray. I just think like any, you know, if your leader gets ECL record and doesn't die yeah. back, like that's just a real tough spot. That's why I think like Asajj is kind of mopey, though I I do like that people are playing her with Petronaki Arena, so she does a four attack off, like off the flip. But just these four attack, these four defense leaders are are, are rough. Yeah, it's hard to figure them out. I looked at one with like the blue base to make him a five five. But it's hard, especially when you have like similar type of aggressive leaders like um like Django and even the who's the new one? The uh, Ventress is it Ventress? Yeah, Ventress. Ventress yeah. is like a four. Um Malice. Does, yeah, just Malice <laughs> aggro. Um I just don't see it. Like there's just like if if there was no such thing as Django and if there was nothing else, like maybe he would see a little more play. Um not even that though. Okay. Hard. Django's so good. If your leader dies to open fire, you're probably doing something. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the one of the tough points too is like when we explore those color schemes, um, the early units are just not good. They're like three ones and stuff. So like, even if the leader like you could do a build around like the early. <laughs> Marshall, Marshall out, yeah, like, like you, you just can't. Oh, I don't know. It needs some. It needs some help and and more than just a leader. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, with that, I think we'll save the rest of the questions for the next one. We're over 110 now. Uh, I've got to go to my daughter's 5K, so let me go to the final slide. Oh, Ooh, no, she's the, playing 5Ks or playing she's 1Ks. A, yeah, no, she's, she's, she's flying with 5K. Uh, cool. So, um, yeah, lots to love about the game. I know some like there's been some like anti-Doomsayer videos, but like the game's great. Everything's going great. The game's if we just have a little more OP, everything's going to be amazing. I mean, um, 200 people in UK is pretty indicative of... Yeah, and that's by, that's by like a non. Running. And yeah. the thing is, we need people making those events. Like, we need more than SCG. We need people to step up and be the event people. Yeah, shout the, out to America. those guys for setting it up. The the content was really really yeah, absolutely good. amazing. Like, and like, in hopefully, I mean, if, only, if only we were doing a K two D ten K, you know, like yeah. I mean, I just got all these sweet graded cards to add to the prize wall. Got a foil oh, mando. Oh, that's gross. Yep. So, Those are sick. Oh, just... I have yeah, I have some hyperfoils to give you. Hyperfoil Vader, and I had to use my hyperfoil Falcon because I only had two. Yeah, but that's gonna I go think in the price. The foils pool. are gonna I get low a, grades, but I'd like I'd, I'd like some non. Yeah, um, we don't have to grade them all. If, if that's true, we don't. But I might I might try anyway. Um. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll check you next time. Booyah! Great podcast. See you guys later. Yeah.